and my mom uh, died on the 3rd of March. She was found uh, without a heartbeat at uh, Bella Vita Nursing Home in Grand Blanc. She fell on a Friday night, Friday sometime. That's what they claim and broke her neck. And then four days later, she was dead. My uncle died April 14th of last year, four weeks in. The nursing home killed him. Lack of nutrition, COVID. The closing down of the nursing homes was the worst thing that they could have done. Uh, the loneliness, the people being there alone, not having family, is far more deadly than the virus. And you are? Melinda Newcomb, CNA, 30 years. Oh, and so you know all about this, don't you? I do. So you're going to be one of the speakers? Yes, and I'm telling a couple of personal stories. Well, she just deals with uh, the nursing home crisis and the situation and the seniors uh, being deprived of uh, visitation, which is causing them to commit suicide and die. Okay. On April 12th, uh, I called him finally and I got a hold of him. And he sounded horrible. I asked the nurse, you know, what happened? She said, I can't tell you. And I'm here to uh, do what we can to get these nursing homes open. My wife is in a nursing home. I've only seen her three times in over a year. It's sad. I do call her every day, but it's not, not the not same. The same. Uh, my husband had an aunt that uh, died alone. She was in a nursing home. They said, she's, we think this is the day she's going to die. I, turned, I was in the car, I turned the car around to go there. It was five minutes away by, and then I got a call, she died. They had to have known, but it's, but she died alone. And that's what, no one should die alone. I'm here for everybody else. That's what I am too. We're representing the many. What happened? Um, nothing yet, but my dad being a senior, you know, happen in the future. Yeah, we've been working with uh, uh, Senator Runstead and Senator Ruth Johnson on this uh, to get legislative changes made uh, to prevent these uh, people from uh, doing this to the elderly. They will themselves to death and not eat because the only thing they have is their uh, family to visit them and it's not there. We are here today representing our loved ones locked away in nursing homes from their families. This group is named Save Our Seniors Michigan. My mom died on February 11th because of this lockdown. I will never touch a window again without a painful memory. For 15 years, dad and I took care of my mom while she struggled with Alzheimer's. The lockdown kept us her primary caregivers, physically separated from mom for 11 months. We watched her fade away and finally die because of her isolation. And here's the kicker. On the day of her death, I called the nursing home about mom's personal effects. Danielle answered the phone at the front desk. Oh, sure, she said cheerfully. You can come by any time and pick up her belongings. Just let us know and go right on into her room and collect her things. What? I said, wait, are you telling me right now that we were not allowed to be with her in her room? For 11 months and now that she is dead today we can come into her room anytime and pick up her things she said unfortunately yes wow have a great day what we are experiencing in our state right now is genocide and we demand change now michigan nursing homes have been locked down since march 11th 2020. Over a year, we haven't been able to hug our loved ones. This is inhumane. Our group, Save Our Seniors Michigan, is working together with the goal of allowing families unlimited in-person visits and physical contact with their loved ones in nursing homes immediately. Save Our Seniors! uniform.
to show what our seniors see 24 seven. Face shields, face masks. We have gloves on when we go in the rooms. This is what their whole life is. Seniors have lost their home, their furniture, cars, clothing, savings, and mostly live in a shared room with one or two strangers. They are told when they eat, what they eat, what days they shower on, and so much more. The one thing they had that kept them going was family. What was once home is now a prison. Some voice they would rather die than be alone. Others say they are being punished for a crime they haven't committed. The visits they once dressed up for, the smiles, showing staff pictures of their grandchildren, gave them hope and a reason to live. So we're seeing rapid decline. One patient grabbed my hand and asked me if she was dying. Due to how the staff was dressed and no family being allowed in. Story is of my uncle. He was a good man. He was a father, a grandfather, a brother, an uncle. He was funny and loving. He needed to go into a nursing home November of 2019. It was starting to get dangerous for him to live alone with his falling and dementia. We were able to visit him every day. In the beginning, it seemed to be okay. After a few weeks, I would find him still in bed with his breakfast trays, still there, not eaten and not showered. I took my concerns to the staff that he needed to be up and dressed, but I would still find him in bed after several attempts at asking the staff to make sure he was up and moving. The last time I saw him was March 17th through the window. He didn't understand why I couldn't come in. We repeatedly called the nursing home. They never answered the phone. After 10 days, I spoke to him. He said they were yelling at him to stay in his room. Residents were not allowed in the cafeteria or the living area. They were made to isolate in their rooms. His sister talked to him and he thought everyone had forgotten about him. On Sunday, April 12th, I begged someone to put him on the phone. He sounded awful. The doctor said she could call in hospice for us where we could have a chance to, to communicate with him. Then Monday came and went, we heard nothing. Tuesday morning, they said they were giving him an x-ray and he passed away. He died alone, thinking he, he had been forgotten and abandoned. My heart breaks for him to be there all alone at 84 years, to have been treated with indifference and disrespect in his final moment. We cannot change the past, however, we can work to change the future to save our seniors. Today. What do we want? Save our seniors! I'm gonna start with a story. Um, early on, a friend of mine had a husband that, that had heart issues. He went into the hospital and then they put him into a, a nursing facility for care. And then the lockdowns happened and um, she couldn't get in. He got COVID. She went there to try to um, to try to help him. They wouldn't let her in. He was on the main floor. She goes up to the window. She sees that he's fallen on a bed. And he's laying on the floor. She's knocking on the window. She's trying to get people's attention to get them to help take care of him. And they call the police on her. Oh my God! He had been put there from the hospital for recovery. What we're doing right now to our seniors is unconscionable and inexcusable, shouldn't be happening. And humans are, we are social creatures. We have to be around other people. It's just the nature of how we live. It's how God made us. And to think that, that we are helping each other by prohibiting us from being able to interact, 
to think of our seniors from having their very last moments removed from their family members is absolutely inexcusable. Seniors are, um, they're largely invisible in the larger community right now, and we can't do that. You're helping them to be seen. We've got to gather together across the state of Michigan with groups like this and start protesting because I have found that is the one thing that the governor will listen to. She looks at the polling and she looks when people gather and start really seeing there has to be change. So again, here it is a cold Saturday just before Easter when most people would rather be doing anything than coming here gathering and yet you've come out to make your voices heard and this is what is going to make change.